I, I welcome, yes, sir. I welcome the two uh, witnesses who are here today, and I would uh, ask the gentleman, Mr. Young, if he would be the lead, and the gentleman is recognized. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate your leadership, uh, uh, as well as the leadership of Ms. Slaughter here on this committee and uh, all of the members here. Uh, it is an honor to appear before you today. Uh, I am going to offer uh, orally here a uh, abbreviated statement in the hope that we can submit to the record. Without objection. Uh, uh, okay. Mr. Chairman, late in the afternoon of July 2, after the financial markets had closed, the Treasury Department released a blog post that announced the administration was delaying enforcement of the employer mandate until 2015. This is not how our system is supposed to work. We are a nation of laws, not a nation of blog posts. Congress writes the laws and the executive branch enforces the law. If it is wise to delay the employer mandate because it has become too complicated and burdensome, then the administration should ask the Congress to delay the mandate. They'd have, they would have found a very receptive audience, I believe. We have all heard from our local businesses and employers, uh, including colleges, uh, schools, local governments, about how the employer mandate was increasing costs and impacting hiring adversely. As H.R. 2667, the Authority for Mandate Delay Act, makes clear, the employer mandate is ill-considered policy, and we can and should come together on delaying its implementation for one year. But a government by the people, of the people, and for the people must be a government that is fair to all citizens. And it is fundamentally unfair for the administration to grant relief to big business, but not give individuals and families the same relief. The individual mandate is equally confusing to the American people as the employer mandate is to business. H.R. 2668, the Fairness for American Families Act, provides that fairness with Congress delaying the individual mandate for one year. Now, the administration's recent regulatory barrage made complying with the law even more complicated for individuals and families. Obamacare, as we have come to know it, has made health insurance more expensive for individuals. President Obama has promised a $2,500 premium decrease. But states that have released premium rate filings in the Obamacare exchanges for 2014 are seeing massive premium increases. The bill I introduced, Fairness for American Families Act, again H.R. 2668, provides the same relief to America's families that the Obama administration granted to big business. The bill delays for one year the individual mandate and the penalties associated with choosing to not purchase government-approved insurance. That is only fair. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.